to provide you with another perspective and potentially to provide me with some support uh, per se. I've invited Brennan Schlagbaum on the show today. Brennan is a husband, a young father, and a CPA that just quit his nine to five job at Deloitte and paid off his house before 30 years old. He's also the financial educator behind Budget Dog, a financial empowerment platform with nearly 100,000 followers. When Brennan isn't motivating people to get out of debt, he enjoys spending time with his family, traveling, and working out. Welcome to the show, Brennan. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, Brennan, let's help Let's help Kevin here with his question. How can Kevin find some motivation to keep paying off his mortgage when there's all these other investment opportunities? There's the stock market, there's whatever, crypto, there's real estate. How does, how does he keep that focus? How does he find that motivation? It's such a good question because it comes up so often, right? And I think the number one thing is you have to understand your why behind everything. And so if you understand your why, that's going to drive a lot of decision making. It's going to be a lot easier that way. Um, so what we did personally, when we paid off our mortgage, we, we mapped out that plan. It allowed us to reach our goals and, you know, take that FOMO feeling away of crypto and real estate and all these 0% down offers everywhere that you look and turn. And then you hear social media, never pay off your mortgage, keep the longest possible mortgage. And so I think if you understand that why, it kind of wraps you back into ignoring the outside noise and focusing on what's important to you. Think what will ultimately make your heart most content. And I think that's really what it comes down to. So for you guys, you, you alluded to, and I talked about at the top of the show, you guys did this as well. What was your why? What, what got you fired up to keep paying off your mortgage when there were all these other investment opportunities? Yeah. So I think the number one thing was as I was building my business, I wanted to reduce the stress as I took that leap. And so the confidence to leave the nine to five was a big deal to me. So, and my wife as well. And so we looked at it as that is we reduce our expenses. We also had a daughter on the way. So to, the ability to stay home with her full time, we would avoid daycare costs. Um, we would bring down the housing costs. There would be less stress on us, right? And on top of that, we realized, you know, eventually we wanted to get to the point where this is a family business. It's not just my business. We wanted to bring her into it too. So eventually that's kind of the goal down the road. So We've gotten to this point and now we have another step. I love that. So there are, you know, there are motivations outside of math is what you're saying then. Uh, well, I, I mean, I guess there's still a math decision in what you made there with less, with fewer expenses in your life, you guys could make some decisions that were better for your family. Absolutely. Because one of my, actually my slogan for Budget Dog is it's bigger than math. And it hits it right on the on the head with it because we did the calculations. We understood, hey, if we would have, and I did a look back analysis and figured out, hey, how much did we actually lose per se, right? And it was $42,000. So we could have increased our net worth by $42,000, but what value would that have brought to us at this point in time? Zero. And so I looked at that and we kind of made the educated decision on that is saying, that's great. We could be $42,000 richer on paper, but our lifestyle would be the same. So the way to pay off the house was, you know, or to be free was to pay off the house. Now let's say you had different goals, like Kevin. Let's 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 put ourselves in Kevin's shoes. If Kevin wants to get into real estate investing, would paying off the mortgage on a on a very low interest rate mortgage make sense if he wants to build wealth down the road and let's say he wants to own 10 properties and live off of that? Would would you have done the same thing then? It's a good question. Um, you know, I might be looking at things a little differently. I do think personal residence is a lot different than rentals. So being able to pay off your personal residence and have no mortgage payment is fine. But if you have a mortgage on a rental property, somebody else is paying that. So you can look at it a little differently. I, I would agree with you. I think I would, yeah. if, if I go down this, when, if and when I ever do any rental properties, for, for now, it doesn't make sense in our lives. We got, we got little kids and it just seems like another job to me. But in the future, oh, yeah. uh, I, w I think I would be happy taking out a mortgage as just a cost of doing business for rental property. So for Kevin- Absolutely. I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess it's a decision he has to make. But for me, if you're so close to the finish line of $30,900, I don't know. There's something mentally satisfying about just saying that you're done with something. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think it's it's so exciting to knock that bucket list item off of the, the list. I mean, just that that feeling the next month in September was our first month that we paid off the mortgage. And not to have that mortgage come through was so gratifying and we were able to take that and invest it. So it was like such a win-win 
Um, and I, I don't regret anything we've done. Now talk to, talk to me about what investing means to you. Cause there's others. We like to talk about it in the fire community. There's those three areas, right? You could stock market invest, you could real estate invest, or you could build a business like you are. Now, when you talk about investing, what does that mean to you? I think financial freedom comes to mind when I hear the word investing. So investing for your future. I think everyone says investing, they think market, stock market, real estate, and stuff like that. I just look at it as putting my future in the forefront and making sure that I'm prepared for the future. And if I can do that through real estate, crypto, whatever it may be, there's so many different things out there. I'm going to do that and take that step. Yeah. Is real estate a part of your plan? Real estate investing in the future? So my friends, the FI couple that I know you've had on here before, <laughs> yeah, great guy. have Allie and, made Allie me and flirt Josh. with the, they flirted with the idea with me about it. And I, I've considered it. Um, and it's definitely something I've been thinking, but as you said, you have little kids and I just had my, my daughter, she's five weeks old. So right now I'm just trying to stay alive. So <laughs> The last thing I want to do is add a whole real estate portfolio to the mix. Um, I don't think I slept last night. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, I, we, we have a little snoo, so it registers how long she's down. She was not down much last night. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I've heard some good things about to how AI is helping young parents uh, make, make sleeping a little easier. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good point. So, I mean, depending on where you are and what season or stage of life you're in, investing in rental properties, investing in real estate may make a lot of sense for you. Uh, for me as a young father, where I've got some uh, di different interests, I I I allocating my time to that right now doesn't seem to, to fit well. And it sounds like that's the case for you. Let's, let's talk about mortgage freedom. We talked about it a little bit for, for you and your family. W was your mortgage freedom, uh, did that allow you to leave your job? Was building your business the, the impetus for leaving your job? How did that all go? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think really it changed our entire outlook. So when we were thinking about that leap, it was a, it's a scary thing to be an entrepreneur. I went to college. I always thought, hey, I'm going to work at Deloitte and a big, and I'm going to work my way up to partner. That was my goal. And all of a sudden, this budget dog thing came about, and I was like, this is really what I like. So I was being pulled away from that, from Deloitte. But the problem was it was still scary to leave that nine-to-five paycheck that's been consistent my whole life. Um, I went to school for – I got my CPA and all that kind of stuff. So – it was, it was scary. So I think being able to bring down that mortgage and eliminating that entirely gave me that confidence to take that leap and just say, you know what, we can do this on her salary alone. Why not take this chance at this point in my life? Yeah, that's great. You know, I think whether it's starting a business or doing something different, or maybe going down to part-time, if you're a parent that wants to spend more time, mortgage freedom can allow you to do those things. When Nicole wanted to go full-time stay-at-home mom our mortgage freedom around 2017 allowed for that to happen because we weren't making a two thousand plus dollar payment each month anymore and we put a lot more towards the principal each month too so it was like a big raise but then the deduction from the reduction of income but the whole point yeah. is to align it to your values and it sounds like that's what you guys have been able to do so outside of uh paying off your mortgage and then figuring out how to build income through your business. Were there other things that you did to prepare for the leap that made you feel even more comfortable? Yes, absolutely. So first off with the business, I wanted consistent income above the nine to five for 12 months at least, which we did. Um, we discussed exit plans together. So that was really, we wanted to be clear with each other when that leap was going to come. Um, and we reduced expenses by obviously paying off the home and every other debt there. So what we, our expenses are low. Um, and so we have zero debt on top of that. But another thing is we wanted to get our health, our investments to a healthy level, to get to that coast FI level so that we know anything on top of that's technically gravy for retirement and then anything additional would be early retirement at that point. So we wanted to make sure all of those things were in place to be in a good spot. Awesome. Talk to me about coast FI. What does that mean to you and how, how is that allowing or how did you get there? Let's talk about that. How did you get there? Uh, investing early and often is the goal and getting that money there early, you know, at the age of 21, 22 years old, or if you can do it earlier, great, do it. Um, my daughter's five weeks old with uh, way bit better net worth than I had at five weeks. So she's in a good situation. And so the earlier you can get that money in, the more it has time to grow and the less you have to actually, you know, contribute yourself. But once you get to that point, where your money is going to grow and grow and grow by itself without any additional contributions, you've reached that coast FI level. Um, and that's what we're at right now. I love it. Yeah. There's uh, very few pensions around or the ones that, that, that are still around, you know, good, good for all those folks that, that have those, but <laughs> for the, for a lot of America, we have to create our own pension and, and having a, a coast FI plan where you can do that early on often can help you, uh, um, 
help you prepare for that. So tell me a little bit about how you're investing for your five year five week old daughter. This is super interesting. You know what? I, I feel like she's a little too spoiled already. <laughs> so so we have three three accounts for her. We have a taxable brokerage account in our name that we're gonna eventually gift her, but it's earmarked for her. I think that's the biggest account. The 529 on top of that for college expenses. Um, and then we have the Roth IRA. So she got her second modeling gig this morning and offered. So any money that she makes is going to go into the Roth IRA, which is earned income. Obviously, a lot of parents don't have that option with a, a baby at five weeks, but she luckily um, was able to do that through my business and then an additional offer because she's on the internet everywhere. And uh, so we're been, we've been contributing to that as well. I love that. Yeah. Talk about investing for three very important <laughs> moments in your life. So you got retirement through the Roth IRA, you've got college through the 529, and then the UTMA or kids brokerage or whatever you're going to do. That is, uh, has, has many options, I guess, as they get older. So many options. Yeah. So very cool. Awesome. Well, so there's somebody listening right now and they're trying to make this decision. They're trying to figure out, should I pay off my mortgage or should I invest more of my money in stocks, real estate, my small business, what would you say to them? How, how could they make this decision? So remember, it's a personal decision. Don't let anyone on the internet or anybody anywhere shame you for doing either because they're both good decisions, right? They're ultimately good decisions. Um, you're helping your future self. So it doesn't have to always be one or the other either. Like we can do a hybrid and that's what we did. So we mapped out our goals and think of it this way. If you have an extra thousand dollars and you don't know what to do with it, Get out two tools, and these two tools have helped me so many times along the decision-making process, an amortization schedule and a compound interest calculator. Plug and play variations of that available money and just figure out what works for you and figure out what makes your heart content. So maybe this, maybe it's 700 investing and 300 to the mortgage, and that allows you to reach both your goals, but maybe it doesn't. And so you want to plug and play those numbers until that situation makes sense. Um but yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is during that mortgage payoff, I do think investing 15% of your gross income is important. So I do think that having that amount of money saved away, even when you're paying off that low interest mortgage makes a lot of sense. But anything over that with that extra thousand dollars, like the example I explained, that's where you guys got to think and just kind of plug and play those numbers. I love that advice. And yes, everybody, we talk about this on the show often. It doesn't have to be an or. These these can be and decisions. And if you're able to start as early as five weeks, you, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of money by the time you're in your 60s. So start early for investing and, and tackle these things. Brennan, thank you so much for your time today. If people want to connect with you, follow you, where's the best place to go? All major socials, um, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, Budget Dog. And then TikTok and Twitter, Budget Dog underscore. Awesome. Brennan, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, everybody, if you're looking for somebody who's not going to shame you for your decisions on the internet and have some fun and help you to reach those family goals, check out Brennan, follow him. I've had a lot of fun following him on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, Brennan, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Andy, for having me.